Do you ever get stuck when you're trying to find the derivative of a square root fractional function using the definition of a derivative? It's pretty tough. I, I know I used to really struggle with those. So today I wanted to show you an example of how you can use the definition of a derivative to find the slope of a tangent line to a square root fraction function. And of course, since derivatives are just slope, finding the slope of the tangent line is gonna require finding the derivative using that definition. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and jump into the example. I'll show you how easy these actually can be once you understand how to do them. So here's the problem we're gonna be going over today in order for me to show you how to use the definition of a derivative to find the slope of a tangent line, specifically having to do with a square root function, and in this case, a function that is actually a fraction and a square root function kind of combined into one. So it's gonna be kind of an interesting problem. The problem we're gonna be doing is we're gonna find the slope of the tangent to the curve, y equals one over the square root of x at the point where x equals a. So in this case, we have some generic x equals a. a in this case is a constant, it's an unknown constant, so we don't know what that number is. But what we want to do is come up with a generic equation, basically, which depends on a, which tells us the slope of the tangent line to this curve at that a value. So what that means, basically, is if you are given some a, you can just plug that in to figure out the slope of the tangent line. And I've already gone ahead and write, written down here the definition of a derivative. And this actually is one of the formulas on my Calculus One Study Guide. You can download that for free right now if you go over to my website, jakesmathlessons.com. There's also a link directly to where you can grab that in the description below. Let's go ahead and just jump into how to solve this problem. What you wanna keep in mind is whenever you're trying to find the slope of a tangent to some curve, all that means is to find the derivative of that function, find f prime, and plug in the x value where you're trying to find the slope at, in this case, x equals a. So all we really need to do is find this f prime of a and put in a for where x is. Well, I've already kind of done that here. The actual definition of the derivative has x's here and here, but in this case, since we know that we need the slope at x equals a, I've already gone ahead and replaced our x's with a. So we can basically just use this formula where f of x is one over the square root of x. So what that means is, if f of x is one over the square root of x, we wanna kinda of think about what these other pieces are gonna be, f of a plus h and f of a. Well, to figure those out, all you have to do is replace your x in your f of x with whatever is in the parentheses here. So to find f of a plus h, we just have to go to our function f of x and replace any x's with a plus h's. And similarly, to find f of a, we just replace our x with an a. So now, if we're trying to find this limit over here, we just need to put f of a plus h minus f of a, which is one over root a, and that's gonna be all over h. So if we can find this limit as h goes to zero of this whole thing here, that's gonna tell us the slope of our tangent line at the point x equals a. We're gonna use a couple tricks here that come up a lot in using the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of some function with both a fraction and a square root. Each of those kind of tricks are gonna come up at a different point in this problem. But the general strategy whenever you're taking the derivative of any function, using the, the definition like this, the idea here is we can't just plug in zero for h into this limit, because if we do that, we're just dividing by h, and that would mean that we would be dividing by zero, which is against the rules of math. You can't divide by zero. So what you wanna think about is how we can manipulate this function so that the h on our denominator gets canceled out, and then we can kinda of just plug in zero for h and see what we get. Another kind of strategy with that is rather than trying to think about how you can get an h on the numerator that will cancel out with this, sometimes what that means is kind of manipulating the numerator and the denominator in the same way to kind of move stuff from the numerator down to the denominator in a way that kind of frees up an h in the numerator so that we can cancel that out. So what I mean by that is in the numerator here, we have this h trapped in a square root. So what we want to think about is how can we get that h out of the square root so that it'll have a chance of canceling with this h down here. Whenever you have square root terms being subtracted from each other like we do in the numerator here, a good strategy to kind of test out or start with is to multiply by the 
conjugate of this. So since we have one term minus another term, if we instead multiply that by this first term plus this second term, it's gonna simplify quite nicely. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But when you, what you wanna keep in mind is whatever you do to the numerator of a fraction, you also have to do to the denominator. Otherwise you're changing the fraction and it's no longer equal. So we wanna multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by one over square root of a plus h plus one over square root of a. And the reason why we wanna do that is what we've created here is the reverse of difference of squares. Difference of squares that if, says that if we have one square thing minus another square thing, we can factor it out to be the square root of the first thing minus the square root of the second times the square root of the first plus the square root of the second. So what this numerator will simplify into is this first thing squared minus this second thing squared. Well, squaring this is just gonna cancel out with the square roots. So that's just gonna give us one over a plus h minus one over a on our numerator. And then our denominator, we're still gonna have h times all this. Now what we wanna do is manipulate this so that we don't have square roots within square roots. We wanna get this to all be one big square root so that we can kind of condense this down into just a numerator and a denominator rather than having fractions in both. So to do that, we need to get a common denominator for these two terms here so that we can combine this, this numerator into one single fraction. So to do that, we just have to multiply this by a over a. We have to multiply this by a plus h over a plus h and doing that is going to give us a over a times a plus h minus 1 times a plus h is a plus h over again a times a plus h so now just looking at these two fractions here they now have a common denominator so we can combine this into one single fraction and just do the numerator minus this other numerator. And then we can distribute our negative, which gives us a minus a minus h. And now that we have a minus a, those are actually gonna cancel. So what this simplifies down into is just an h on the numerator up here, and then a times a plus h on our denominator. And then this whole denominator here stays the same, but what you want to keep in mind is whenever you have a fraction like this, dividing by something is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So instead of doing this fraction divided by all this, we can actually do this fraction times one over all this. And now look what happens. This h that we were trying to cancel out the whole time can cancel with this h here. So now we just have a negative one on the numerator and all this stuff down here on the denominator. So now let's think about, remember the goal here was to get our limit or what we were taking the limit of into a position where we could just plug in zero for h and actually get some answer. Well, let's think about what would happen if we do that now. And let me actually get these h's out of here because they did cancel out. So our denominator is just a times a plus h times all this stuff in the parentheses here. And our numerator is just negative one. So if we were to actually think about what would happen if we plug in zero for h now, we're gonna get negative one over a times a plus zero which is just a, so a times a is a squared. And then over here, we're gonna get one over the square root of a plus zero, which is just one over root a, plus one over root a. So one over root a plus one over root a just gives us two over root a. So now you can see if we plug in zero for h or basically evaluate this limit as h goes to zero, we never divided by zero at any point. So this actually does give us an acceptable continuous function that we can evaluate the limit by just simply plugging in h equals zero. So that's kind of the goal with these. Now we've gotten it to a point where plugging in that in doesn't break the rules of math. So now that we've done that, we can actually see that indeed this limit will equal what we have written over here. 
So now what we can do is simplify this down and see what we have. And to simplify this down, what you can do is think of the square root of a as a to the one half. So a squared times two over a to the one half. The one half power down here is gonna cancel with part of this two up here. So we're just gonna get negative one over a to the three halves times two. And keep in mind, this all equals f prime of a. So now we can see we've gotten this to a point where we just have f prime of a, which represents the slope of our, our tangent to this curve at the point where x equals a. And we have this equation, which is just in terms of a. We've evaluated that limit using the definition of a derivative. And if you were to actually take the derivative of this function using some other simpler method like power rule, for example, and then plug in a for x, you would actually see that you would get negative one over two a to the three halves power or negative one half a to the negative three halves power would be the same. So this is gonna be the slope of our tangent at x equals a. Well, I hope you found that video helpful and you have a much easier time using the definition of a derivative to find the derivative of a square root function. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon too so you're notified of all my new videos. And if you want some more practice finding slopes or equations of tangent lines, go ahead and click on one of those videos over there. Thanks and see you next time.